This video is brought to you by Viking Jewelry. Hey Noble Ones! The Shield World is widely featured on TV series, video games and films that tell us stories about or are based on Viking activity. The Shield Wall, namely the close formation of overlapping round shields, is constantly used by the Norse to overpower their opponents in all of these forms of media, from entertainment to infotainment. It is in fact represented as a staple of Norse war tactics, saying the first two seasons of Vikings it's all over the place. We saw it so many times in conjunction with the Vikings that we accept it without skepticism. But what does the evidence suggest? What do the experts say? Did the Norse actually use the shield wall or is it just a ginormous movie trope? And goodness gracious, I love copper. Well, a brief Google search on this topic will spawn an array of internet articles that tell you it was a myth, it was all a myth, it never existed. Now this will be interesting, but as you already know, also because I've said it so many times on this platform, one of the problems with these sort of copycat pseudoscientific articles and blogs is the fact that they oftentimes misquote the original sources, they translate articles without any fact-checking, they definitely add of their own. They also almost never give links to the original papers or study proper, and they often don't have any bibliography at all, ultimately mudding the waters. Not trustworthy. But one thing that all of these articles have in common, this time, is one name. The name of an archaeologist, PhD student and researcher at Stockholm University, Rolf warming. So I got in contact with this gentleman, we spoke a great length and yes, the majority of these articles and blogs, except for Science Nordic, they're fine. But the majority of these blogs are indeed misrepresenting his finds. Why? Well, sensationalism I guess. So with this video I'd like to give justice to Mr. Warming's exceptional research and thanks to the time that he kindly dedicated to me, you noble ones will have access first hand to what he actually said you will find all sorts of links to the original research down below, as well as a direct link to the Society for Combat Archaeology, an international organisation committed to the advancement of knowledge about the nature of combat and conflict in the past, of which Mr. Warming is a founding member. Definitely check them out and say hello from the community of Noble Ones. But the question for you and me today is this. Can his research and findings shed new light on the topic of Viking, shield walls and war tactics? What we are examining today is the concept of the shield wall as a widespread Scandinavian battle tactic and the hypothetical use of such a formation in close quarter combat. One of the main differences that we see already between the internet random articles and the research proper is the fact that these articles mainly focus on the experimental archaeology aspect of the project, where the researcher made round shields and tested them out in recreated combat. The articles say the shields broke too easily, so the shield wall didn't work, so no shield wall for the Vikings. Does that sound like sound science? to you. In reality, as per the explanation of Mr. Warming's, the experimental parts of the projects were only included as appendixes, and that makes a world of difference, academically speaking. In other words, the main body of the thesis concerns the archaeological and historical sources concerning the alleged shield wall. The researcher's methodological approach was first and foremost archaeological, looking at the material evidence and literary, exploring the historical sources, revisiting translations from Old English and Old Norse, and then, finally, it was complemented with practical testing. Just so we're clear, this is a professional study. Alright, wonderful, but what does the research say? The core of the matter is, it is highly unlikely that the Norse used the shield wall tactics as we see them represented in movies and video games, namely a formation of interlocking round shields. So we could say that it's a similar conclusion, but for very different reasons. Now of course, never say never, we can't be 100% sure that no one coming from Scandinavia ever used anything like a shield wall in the entirety of the Viking Age, but that is beyond the point. So what is the point? Well the point is this, as you review all of the evidence that has to do with the shield wall, and by the way that's rather scant, but as you review it professionally, you should absolutely question it. That is the healthy approach to the matter. Don't just assume that the Vikings definitely used shield walls just because you see them in the movies. Vikings and shield walls do not go together as milk and cookies do. Which is what the average consumer of Viking related content in our day and age seems to do. And it's not the consumer's fault. In fact, it's the media's fault. Because particularly when you're doing infotainment, so with games, you know, whatever, but when you're doing infotainment, you should really not just show what looks cool, you should show what the evidence 
seems to suggest. Also because now this Vikings equals shield wall bled into reenactment. So you know the kind of line that sometimes I get in the comments, it's not historical reenactment, it's just a film, but it, it happens in historical reenactment too. So there's that. So in the next section of this video we're going to see how Mr. Warming has reached this conclusion, we'll see how he defends his thesis, we'll look at both the literary evidence and the translations and the actual meaning of the words we find that are often associated with shield walls. We will also look at the actual design of the round shields and see what it seems to suggest when it comes to their intended usage. Finally we'll have two elephants in the room and one clarification directly from Mr. Warming. All of this after a brief word from a kind sponsor. Now before jumping into the actual articles, I'd like to take a moment to mention the sponsor that made this video possible, Viking Jewelry. As you know, me and the guys at Viking Jewelry have been collaborating for quite a few years now. I own several of their bronze and silver rings. I really, really like them and I love their t-shirt line to death based on um, Norse mythology. I think it's absolutely breathtaking and they've got some new stuff. They now offer a whole new collection and you can see, for example, these wooden watches that look absolutely, they look so cool and I can speak of the quality of the products that Viking Jewelry provide because their stuff is handmade by artisans in Italy, France and Spain. And for the more passionate they also have historical replicas made in Spain. Now for the next 48 hours only Viking Jewelry is kindly offering a 30% off to you noble ones for all the first line products and then a 15% off for 7 days for the entirety of the shop. All of the percentages that I get from their sales will be utilized to purchase a new historically accurate Viking shield. I'll tell you more about it once the shield is ready and I'll make a dedicated video. So big thanks to you and Viking Jewelry for allowing me to get very soon a historically accurate Viking shield to use for content production. Okay, let's begin with the literary evidence, because I mean, considering how ubiquitous the shield wall is in association with the Vikings in the media, you would expect at least one Viking to mention it, perhaps even, you know, tell us how it worked. Hey, even saying whenever we fought someone, we met the enemy in battle, then one of us would scream shield wall and everybody would go behind this interlocking round shield. No. And this is, uh, this is Final Fantasy Tactics, you might as well look in here, because you will not find anything. Of course, when I say you won't find anything, I don't mean that there isn't any mention of shields used in battle in some sort of formation. Now, there is some, but the first thing we need to say is that all mentions that have to do with the shield wall are in Old English, and it's only in a handful of sources. But one characteristic of these sources is that whenever it's used, though the word shield wall or any synonym, they're used as a form of kennings. So a form of figurative language and or as an alliteration technique within the context of poetry. There is no indication or proof that they were actually talking about a formation or battle tactic. Now we have got two elephants in this room today and to address the first one I'd like to talk about the shield bug. Now you see this word here that I'm not even gonna dare to try and pronounce is often translated as shield wall but then again this is probably an improper translation. Well because even though in the sources this word is actually talking about a real formation used in battle it's a completely different formation. Yes it involves soldiers, troops, shields but it doesn't represent the shield wall the way you think. It was a circular array of warriors which was usually placed behind the main formation and designed to protect the king. And this is why translating it as shield wall is problematic because then if you think about the shield wall you're thinking all of these guys are building a wall of shields interlocking. No, they are creating a circle around the king or whatever leader of the army to protect him. This is not the main battlefield formation. Now when it comes to elephant in the room number two, yes lots of elephants here today, we have got to talk about the boar snout. There is some reasonable evidence that points to the fact that the boar snout was a sort of formation, kind of special formation in fact, used by the Norse during warfare. Thing is though, that this is not a defensive formation, it's in fact an offensive maneuver and it was mostly created to disrupt enemy lines. And even though some authors still consider it to be a variation of the shield wall, more and more people within academia are starting to be convinced that in fact the idea of the passive defensive shield wall of interlocking shields is not to be considered a default formation for the Norse. 
This in fact connects beautifully to the next section. We're going to talk about the way the shield is designed and this is a buckler. So why the heck have I got a buckler here? Well, because I still don't have the actual proper Viking shield. So hopefully quite a few of you will get some rings and some t-shirts and interesting stuff from Viking jewelry so that I can get perhaps in the next couple of weeks a nice round shield that we can play with. But still, this is interesting. It could be relevant because it has a similar way of being held. It is in fact a center gripped boss shield. Whether it be the classical period, whether it be the medieval period, and then again going forward, even in the Renaissance, shields have always had lots of different possible grips. I mean, look at the Roman shield. It's center bossed, but it's held a little bit like a briefcase, if you will. Other shields were strapped. Many shields in the medieval period were strapped. Some classical period shields were also strapped, although the mechanism by which they were strapped is different. But then we have shields that are held in the center this way. Now, the way a shield is designed, the way a shield is built, tells you a lot when it comes to its intended use. And one of the things that most experts agree on is that a shield that is center bossed and gripped like this most likely was intended to be used in a more, shall we say, active way, very dynamically, rather than just standing still and receiving blows and then counter attack. You can extend your arm and reach much further when the shield is gripped in the boss. So there really is a sort of intellectual disconnect between shields that seem to have been designed to be used actively and a rather passive formation, which is the idea of the shield wall as we imagine it, the way the Romans did it with the testudo. But the main difference is that the Romans did tell us that that was a formation. They explained exactly how they used it, whereas no such explanation exists when it comes to round shields and the Vikings. And not only the shields are designed in a completely different way, just because the Romans did it, it doesn't mean that everyone else did when they had shields. And then last but not least, there is the aspect of durability. Now you see, this is one of those points that I hope this video will be able to help clarify things because Mr. Warming has in fact changed his mind because of subsequent testing that you can see. Link in the description box somewhere here. I don't know. You see, lots of these articles that you find out there will still tell you his old opinion based on the previous project testing where he thought that the round shields would break too easily and so they wouldn't be suited for a shield wall in a sense of a passive defense mechanism. So then again, the articles are not good anymore when it comes to that, and they haven't been updated. With the new, more historically accurate shields that he produced, he could see that durability was no problem. Durability is not a problem anymore. In fact, Viking Age round shields happen to be very durable. All right, but what do you think? Do you think that perhaps some Vikings did use it, but it wasn't that widespread? Or do you agree with Mr. Warming and think that most likely that's not the way a Viking fought in the majority of cases? Well, do you have any experience with round shield combat? If you do, let me know in the comments below. I personally tend to agree very much with Mr. Warming. I think it's the, the thesis that makes more sense. And perhaps we'll find out even more about this very interesting topic of shield walls and Vikings. All right, number ones, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up. And if you're not yet members of this community, become a number one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. Check out Viking Jewelry and their offer. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And remember, the Metatron. Spread his wings. Goodbye.